In this video, we are going to look at electrolysis of molten lead bromide using graphite electrodes. Remember, we are using graphite because they are relatively inert. So, these electrodes, we shall not worry that maybe they will react with our lead bromide. So, we shall start with closing the switch. Remember, electrolysis will have to involve electricity. That's why we have our direct current supply here. So once we close our switch S, what happens is that our electrodes will now become polarized depending on their position to the DC supply. So we shall have our positive terminal here of the, of the battery. That means this electrode here will become our anode, the one connected to the positive terminal, while the other one will become the negative electrode which is the cathode so once the switch is closed in our molten lead bromide we have mainly two ions so if you have to look at the ions present in lead bromide we have the lead two ions and the bromide ions so because lead bromide is ionic in solution form or in molten form we shall always have these two ions and now when the switch is closed and the circuit is complete we shall have migration of ions so we shall have our lead to ions and our bromide ions in solution so when you look at the reaction at the anode so if we are to look at our anode the positively charged electrode we shall have the negatively charged ions migrating towards this positively charged electrode. Remember, this is electron deficient and it's basically positively charged. So what happens is that this bromide ion will now lose its electron. But because I don't want to say minus electrons, so I'll just add it to the right to form a bromine atom. However, bromine is basically a diatomic molecule, so the element will require two ions of bromine to lose two electrons, so that we form bromine gas. So this will be the discharge of the bromine, the bromide ions at the anode. While at the cathode, which is a negative electrode, we shall have the positively charged lead ions migrating towards our cathode. Remember the cathode is electron rich, it has very many electrons. So what happens, our lead ions will have to get discharged when they reach the cathode, they will pick two electrons from the cathode so that they form bromine, sorry, lead atoms liquid because the temperature is relatively high so this is what actually takes place so in terms of observation what is likely to be seen when you look at the cathode here at the cathode we, we shall see some solid deposits or in, in liquid form we shall see lead we shall see some gray solid melting so it will a gray solid will melt and sink at the cathode and that will be due to the formation of the lead atoms however at the anode we shall see bubbles of a reddish brown gas which is bromine gas reddish brown gas however because bromine gas is also slightly soluble in water we may also form a reddish brown solution in the due process reddish brown solution may be formed because the bromine may dissolve in in our water or in our solution here so when you look at equation one and equation 2, we can come up with an overall equation for the reaction by combining the two. So
so that means we shall have our lead two ions they will obviously get some electrons from the brom two bromide ions so that we form our lead and bromine gas so this will be the overall equation for this electrolysis and lastly the last observation possible if at all we have a bulb in our setup we shall see the the bulb lighting because actually molten lead bromide conducts electricity due to the presence of these two ions here the lead ions and the bromide ions so that's all about electrolysis of molten lead bromide thanks for watching be well